Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 29 of my algebra tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to learn a lot of things. And I know I say that a lot, but we will. We're going to talk about exponential equations. We're going to solve complex logarithmic equations. I'm also going to talk about the one-to-one -one property of exponential functions, the power rule for logarithms, a one-to-one -one property of logarithms, and a whole bunch more. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so an exponential equation is just an equation with a variable as one of the exponents. And specifically what I want to talk about right now is the one-to-one -one property of exponential functions. It sounds really complicated, but it really is not. All it is saying is if we have a situation in which we have a base with an exponent, which is equal to another base with an exponent, and they are equal to each other, then in that situation we know that x is going to be equal to y. And that is all the rule means. So very, very simple. Now we can use this to solve rather complicated looking problems really easily. So what I'm going to start off with is I'm going to solve an exponential equation in which both sides can use the same base. And you're going to see what I'm talking about here as I solve it. So let's say you have 4 to the power of 2x plus 1 is equal to 16. All right, so rather complicated looking problem. Let me show you how easy it is to solve, however. So what we're going to do is we're going to have 4, 2x plus 1. And we know that 4 or 16 translates into 4 to the power of 2. What we can do now is since this is the same and this is the same, and we know the rule that bx, if bx is equal to by, which it most definitely is, well then x must be equal to y. Well, what we can simply do to solve this problem is just take this 2x plus 1, throw it down here, and know that that is going to be equal to the 2, which comes from right here. And then we can easily solve this really complicated looking problem very, very simply by just going and taking the value of 1 on the left side of the screen and subtracting it over here. That is going to give us 2x is equal to 1 or x is equal to 1 half. So we went from this really complicated looking problem up here to an extremely easy solution. All right, so, and this is a situation that we can use or a technique we can use in which we can get the bases to be equal. So we have a four on both sides. Let me solve another problem. So let's say you have 27 to the power of two minus four X and this is going to be equal to three. Okay, well we can now go and get three to the power of three to represent 27. And now you can see our bases are going to be equal. We're still gonna have the two minus four X up here. This is still going to be equal to three, of course. Then we'll be able to take this value of three, this exponent of three, and distribute it across this guy right here. And when we do that, this will become 3 to the power of 6 minus 12x is equal to 3. And then we can go and just turn this into 6 minus 12x is equal to. And what's the exponent for this? 1. So this is 1, right like that. Then this is going to be changed into negative 12x is equal to negative Five, and then we can solve for x to find that x is equal to 5 over 12. All right, so I think that makes some good sense there, and you should have a good grasp on that. And up next, I want to talk about the power rule for logarithms. Okay, so this is another thing that sounds extremely complicated, but once you actually see it, it's not that complicated. Basically, what the power rule for, for logarithms tells us is you can rewrite the logarithm of a power as the product of the exponent times the logarithm of the base. Wow, that sounded complicated. Let me go and show you exactly what's going on here. So we'll say if you have log b m 
to the power of n. This is going to be equal to n times log b m. All right, and this is going to solve a lot of problems for us. So let me just show you some examples. I'm going to go log 2x to the third. That, if I'm using the power rule, is going to translate into 3 times log 2x. Likewise, if we had log 3, 16, that is going to translate into log 3, 2 to the power of 4, which is then going to translate into 4 times log 3, 2. Okay? And that is extremely important to understand because it is going to allow us to solve exponential equations in which we cannot equate the basis. But we're going to have to learn another rule right now. And basically, it is very similar to the first one-to-one -one property we learned. In this situation, however, we are dealing with the one-to-one -one property of logarithms. And what it says is if log b x is equal to log b y, well, in that situation, we know that x is equal to y. And there you go. All right, so let's now solve an exponential equation in which we cannot equate bases using both of the new things we just learned. So let's say we have 4x is equal to 12. How are we going to solve that? Well, we are going to, in this situation, use the common log, which is going to be log 10. But I'm not going to write that in. I'm just going to leave that off. So we'll go 4x is equal to log 12. Then what we're going to use is our one-to-one -one property, and that's going to allow us to put the x down here times log 4 is equal to log 12. And now what we can do is just divide by the log of 4 to get that x is equal to log of 12. And again, we're dealing with the common log here, divided by log of 4. And that is going to be approximately equal to 1.08 divided by 0.6, which is approximately equal to 1.8. All right, so there we went and combined two of the new rules that we learned. And now I'm going to solve an even more complicated problem. All right, so what we're going to have here now is e to the power of 5x plus 2 is equal to 4. So since we're dealing with Euler's number here, what we're going to be using this time is the natural log, which is abbreviated ln like this, like I talked about in my logarithm tutorial. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to use my one-to-one -one property. So I'm going to say ln e 5x plus 2 is equal to ln 4. Now what I'm going to use is my power rule. So this is going to become 5x plus 2 and natural log of e is equal to ln 4. Now I'm going to go and solve for my natural log. And the natural log of e, of course, is equal to 1. So this now becomes just 5x plus 2. And this guy right here becomes 1. But, you know, that's just going to disappear because 1 times something just gives you the same thing, of course. So here we are as we progress. Now I'm going to use my power rule. I'm going to say 5x plus 2. 2 is equal to the natural log 2, 2 to the power of 2. And then this becomes 5x plus 2 is equal to 2 times natural log of 2. We're going to subtract our constant here, being the 2, making this 5x is equal to 2 times natural log of 2 minus 2. 
and then we're going to divide by 5, and that is going to give us a value of x is equal to 2 natural log of 2 over 5 minus 2 over 5. I'm running out of screen real estate, so I'm going to go up here to finish this off. And this translates into x is equal to 2 over 5 times the natural log of 2 minus 2 over 5. And that is going to, if we go and work out that, it's going to come to an approximate value of negative 0 0.5. One, two, three. And there you go. Now we applied all of our rules all in solving one complex problem. And now I'm going to show you how to solve rather complex logarithmic equations. All right. So let's say we have log 2x plus 1 and log 2, 2 minus x. And this is equal to 3. I know it looks kind of daunting, but let me just show you exactly what's going on. All right. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to find the values of x that are going to return a value that is not negative or zero since we are dealing with these log values. So what is a value of x that's going to work for log of 2x plus 1? Well, the values that are going to not give us a negative value or a zero is going to be situations in which we have x plus 1 is less than or equal to 0. We're going to have to do the same for the other part of our equation. So what values here are we not going to get a negative or a 0 value? Well, that's going to be 2 minus x less than or equal to 0 once again. So then we need to solve for x and f go and find a defined range that is going to include all values for which our equation is defined. And if we take a look at this and this rule right here, that is showing us that we have a defined range that is going to be between the value of negative 1 and positive 2. Hopefully that wasn't complicated. But basically, it, yes, it is very possible to go and get an answer that is actually incorrect whenever you are dealing with logarithmic equations like this. But what this is doing is it's saying to us, as long as our value for x is between negative 1 and 2, everything's okay and the solution that we find is correct. So now what I need to do is come in here and solve it. So... Another <laughs> rule, I keep on adding the old rules here. I'm going to put this as a new rule. If we have log of a x minus log of a y, we know that this is going to be equal to log a x over y. All right. And that is a rule that we will now use to solve this problem. So what that means is we can translate this guy up here into, using this rule right here, log 2x plus 1 divided by 2 minus x. And this will be equal to 3. Hey, let's add another rule. Okay, so... I told you there was going to be a lot in this video. Another rule we know is if we have something of the form log a x equal to b, well, in that situation, this can be translated to x is equal to a to the power of b. So knowing that, what we can do is we can come in and say that x basically this is where we're going. This, using this rule this time, is telling us that we can change this equation into a format that is x plus 1 divided by 2 minus x. And this will be equal to 8. And this will be equal to 2 to the power of 3. Or just simply 8. And now this is going to make everything extremely simple. 
What we're going to do now is multiply both sides by 2 minus x, and we will get x plus 1 is equal to 8 times 2 minus x. This then is going to simplify down to x plus 1 is equal to 16 minus 8x, which further simplifies down to 9x is equal to 15, and x is equal to 5 over 3. And then we have to verify that this value for x is going to fit within our defined range of negative 1 and 2. And yes, indeed, 5 over 3 does fit within that range. So we know that yes, indeed, this value right here is true for the value of x. All right, so I know I covered a lot of things in this video. Definitely go and write down the rules and then go and hunt around on the internet to solve some logarithmic as well as exponential equation problems. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.